Hey guys, I'm Cody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. So today I am going to share with you all of the best books I've read so far this year. I'm hyped for it. <laughs> so if you've been here for a while, you will know I read a lot of books, don't I? So I've actually read 114 books <laughs> already this year, as of today. I finished The Stand yesterday, guys. Can we just... Like, that's an achievement. Miracles do happen if you just believe enough. <laughs> and out of those 114, I have given 15 of them five stars. So this is just going to be a wee list of those, not going in any particular order apart from the top two, which you probably know what they are, but anyway. Yeah, so a top 15 and then I'm going to just hold up 20 more. <laughs> I'm not going to go too much into them, but if you have any questions, of course, ask me in the comments. But I'm going to hold up another 20 that were 4.25, 4.5s, you know, close to the five star mark, but it didn't quite do it for me. It might do it for you. So I thought I'd like to include those at the end as well. So let's get into it. This first one just made it onto this list. I gave it like a 4.5, I think, on Goodreads, but upon reflection, it really does deserve a five star. And that one is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think y'all know what this is, and I, yes, the hype lived up. I loved it too. So for y'all who have been sleeping on this one, this one is about Evelyn Hugo, who was a film star, and she's telling her life to a reporter. And it basically has seven chapters for the seven husbands that she had, and it goes into why she married them, and who her true love really was. And there's lots of intrigue and mystery in here, there's a nice wee twist as well, and it's just a cracker of a book. Contemporary's not usually my thing, but this feels a little bit like a thriller, kind of. And also, we have great rep in here as well, so, if you haven't read this yet, it's in my top 15 for a reason. Highly recommend you go and read it. It'd be great for summer as well. A graphic novel series that made it into my top 15 is Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. Now, this is a real confusing, kind of steampunk, Asian-inspired, high fantasy graphic novel series. So in this story, we're following a young girl who has a monster trapped inside of her who makes her do very very bad things. It's also very political and we have different races of creatures and humans and hybrids and the art style you guys alone. Just just get this for the art style. It is so cool and the humour in this is also very good. I'd say this is adult. It is very difficult to understand when you first read it you're like what the hell is happening but about the halfway mark you start to get it and it's very intriguing and my favourite part of this is that we have a race of talking cats who are very sneaky and I'm just absolutely in love with this. Cannot wait to continue. Um, the second one, this one, kind of fell a little bit short for me. This one I gave a four star to, but the first volume I gave a five star. Highly recommend if you're into graphic novels. We then have Night Film by Marisha Pessel, which I buddy read with Mel from Bookish Mel. Please you guys go check her out. She deserves so much more love. I will link her in description. She is such a babe and we absolutely adored this book. So this is well known on booktube, however this is about a reporter who is investigating a kind of well known celebrity's death and she's a celebrity because her father is famous, he creates these really dark and twisted films that kind of have a cult following and it's all very underground and he is very mysterious and this reporter thinks he possibly could have had something to do with his daughter's death. This book is a story that will stick with you. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. It is very dark and creepy and weird and you basically don't know what's going on for the majority of this book. And when you get to the end of the book, you're still left with some questions. But I just absolutely devoured it. Honestly, I was racing ahead of Mel and I had to apologise because I was just so into this story. I highly recommend this book, you guys, if you like thrillers and you're looking for something darker and weird. This one is a cracker. We then have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon, which I'm very happy to put on this list. This is a kind of historical fiction, um, but it's also a little bit like a thriller, it reads a little bit like a thriller. So this book is set in Barcelona in 1945, and it's about a young boy whose dad introduces him to a library of forgotten books, and these are just secondhand books that people have just genuinely forgotten about. So he takes a book and he falls in love with this story, and upon finishing it, he wants more of this author's writing. He wants to find out who this author is, as we all would, you know. Upon looking into this author and his life, though, we have a shady character who starts to follow him around and leave him notes and tell him to basically back off. So this is an investigation into this author's life. We do get some flashbacks into what happened with this author and why he is not known now. 
and it's just one hell of a story. This twists and turns. It is a little bit slow and it's very character driven, but honestly, it will have you hooked and the writing style is absolutely beautiful. It's immaculate. I could just picture Barcelona and it makes me wanna go. <laughs> so yeah, highly recommend you check it out if it sounds like your kind of thing. The next book I wanna talk about is Eleanor Ollivant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I absolutely love this bloody book. It's so good. It's set in Scotland. It's about a character who's not very likeable at the beginning, but you start to empathise with her. And it's basically a story about friendship and loneliness, and it's just so bloody good. So in this book, we are following Eleanor. As I said, she's quite unlikable. She has no friends and no social skills. The only person she really talks to outside of work is her mum on the phone every once in a while. Um, so she's very, very lonely. She drinks a lot. She basically just works and goes home. That's all she does. However, her life takes a turn when she meets a young guy, and it's not a romance, you guys, so, you know, good. Um, he meet, she meets a young guy um, from work, and they start to form a relationship and a friendship, and we just find out more about Eleanor and her backstory. It is a little bit like a thriller in parts as well, because Eleanor does have scars, and we don't know why she has them, and she has kind of blocked that out and we get to find out more about that and the mystery of her mum and oh my god guys read it <laughs> I know it's contemporary but like that's not usually my cup of tea however it's just so funny and heartwarming and also will have you guessing up until the very end can't recommend this one enough Next we have Norwegian Wood by Haruka Murakami. This is the first of his books I read and I absolutely fell in love with it. I actually listened to this from my library on Overdrive, so I listened to the audiobook. So, might be a little bit biased, I might have just fallen in love with that audiobook. I don't know if I would still give it a five if I'd have read it, but I like to think I would. So this book, we're following Toru, who um, at the beginning of this book, he is reminiscing on his past and we get to follow him while he's at college. Unfortunately, a, school, a friend that he had at school, his best friend, has committed suicide and it's about Toru's relationship with that friend's girlfriend and her struggles and she has some mental health issues herself. So this is a kind of tragic love story, I guess, and Toru does do some sketchy things in here and I was a bit like, dude, why? However, this was so beautifully written and the way I heard it, it sounded very lyrical and I just completely was immersed in this. It made me go outside and walk. It made me do exercise, so I had a reason to listen to it. Absolutely adored it. I will be reading more from him if you have any more recommendations for me that I like this one. I know this is kind of less weird than his others. Um, still, hit me up. A book I was so happy that I finally got to reading this year is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I'd never tried Robin Hobb, so this was my first introduction to her and I'm sold. So in this story, we are following Fitz, who is the bastard to a prince who is in line for the throne. And he just gets left on the doorstep by his mother's family and said, it's your problem now, you look after him. So he starts to work and kind of train um, to become an assassin when the king decides that's what he wants him to do. He wants him to become an assassin for the kingdom. Not only is he trained to be an assassin, he is also training with magic, and you know that's one of my faves. And it is very cool magic. There's two types of magic. There is seeing, so being able to see across distances, kind of like telepathy. And also there is one where you can kind of converse with animals. And I'm so excited to see where that one goes. Just talking animals is like my thing. I love that. <laughs> So this story is filled with lots of whimsical characters and twists that you don't see coming, lots of political intrigue and an amazing magic system and the characters as well. It did take me a while to get into, not gonna lie, there's a lot of world building in the first 100 pages, but it's totally worth it. I get why she is such a legend in this field and I am just so excited to carry on and hopefully I will be finishing this trilogy at least by the end of the year. I think she's now one of my favourite authors. Highly recommend if you love high fantasy. So let's talk about God's Grave by Jay Kristoff, shall we? This is the second book in the Nevernight Chronicles and I absolutely bloody love this book. I only gave Nevernight four stars. This one was definitely a five star. Honestly, it's great. Just like I said about Assassin's Apprentice, this again has an assassin and talking animals, kind of. <laughs> there is a shadow cat called Mr. Kindly and I just absolutely adore him and the humour in this is everything and oh, I just love this series so much. <laughs> So this book has one of my favourite characters of all time and that's Mia Corvera herself who in the first book goes to a school to learn how to be an assassin as she wants revenge against the deaths of her family members. There's also magic in here though and lots of training and this one gets to be a little bit more Roman inspired I want to say. We have some kind of gladiator characters in here and as I said really good rep. I love the humour in this in particular. If you haven't tried Nevernight yet highly suggest you give it a go. It's one of my favourite fantasies pretty much of all time now. Like, I just cannot wait for Dark Dawn and it's been pushed back to 2019. And when I found that out, my heart broke a little bit, but I just, I'm so hyped for it. <laughs> 
A book I took up from the library was A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard and I absolutely fell in love with this book. And it's a contemporary. I know, who this? But it's one that deals with mental health and you know that's my kind of thing. So this is a story about a young girl who is a selective mute due to the fact that she has very bad anxiety. She suffers with panic attacks and it's really impacting her life to the point where she doesn't know if she can go to university simply because she doesn't know if she can handle it. However, she meets a new boy at school who is deaf and they form a friendship and then it kind of goes into a relationship and a romance and romance isn't my kind of thing. But this was hella sweet just because it really did feel like that first love and it was just so cute. When it boils down to it, this story is basically about how they communicate with each other and the difficulties and changes in their personalities as they start to grow and get help with their issues and it's just so hella sweet and cute but also it's a bit deeper with that rep and the rep was really good and I just fell in love with it. If it sounds like your kind of thing, I highly recommend guys, check it out, it's just so, so cute. <laughs> Another library one. Guys, I cannot find this hardback anywhere in the UK. If you know where I can get this hardback, let me know. And it is, of course, Strange Ojima by Lainey Taylor. I know the paper book, paperbacks come out and it's really cute, but I love this book so much and I love the look of the hardback. I just really want it, so hit me up if you know. <laughs> So Strange Dreamer is very well known on here. I know some people didn't love it, but I am one of the one of the ones who did. So if you haven't heard of it, I'm pretty sure you will have done. But this is about Laszlo Strange, who is a librarian, and to be fair, like Loki kind of had a little bit of a crush on him. Anyway, he is obsessed with a city that is nicknamed Weep because the name of the city and anything about it has all been lost. Nobody knows anything about it, but he is kind of Loki obsessed with the city. Although one day people from this city come to visit where he lives and he goes off with them with some other people to go and help them. They need their help in sorting out the city. Something's wrong and we don't get to find out what's wrong until they get there and I don't want to tell you because I don't want to spoil you. But I absolutely love this book mostly because of the writing style just like many others. Lainey Taylor's writing is beautiful and I cannot wait to read Muse of Nightmares. It's like my most anticipated book of the year. <laughs> oh and that ending though, that ending. Can't wait to see where it goes. One that I want more people to read is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I absolutely bloody love this book and it was a debut novel and I don't feel like enough people are talking about this one. I really enjoyed it. So this story is kind of Agatha Christie meets Freaky Friday. It's really weird but good. It's kind of also a little bit historical. I think this is set around the 1920s if I can remember correctly. And it's basically about a guy who wakes up with memory loss at this dinner party where a bunch of people are and he doesn't know what the hell is happening but that night someone assassinates Evelyn Hardcastle and the next day he wakes up in somebody else's body like someone else from this party and that just keeps happening to him and a guy comes and tells him that to stop this from happening and to get back to his true self he needs to solve the mystery of who is going to kill Evelyn Hardcastle and it is just such a whirlwind. It's quite confusing as you can imagine at the beginning because the protagonist doesn't know what the hell's going on. The reader doesn't know what the hell's going on. But as you get through this book, you get more answers. I love the way it ended and there's some really cool characters in here and lots of twists and turns. As I said, it's a great mystery novel and I don't read enough of those. If you have any recommendations for me that are like this, please let me know. This is very sci-fi, thriller, mystery, goodness. I want everyone to read it. <laughs> now we have Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I absolutely bloody love this book and again a contemporary but it's not a romance this one and I love it even more because of that fact. So this story is about Frances who is very confused as to her future and she's a very hard-working student and she is determined she's going to university but she doesn't really know where she stands in this point in time in her life. However, she does have a hobby which is creating fan art for a podcast which is very famous on YouTube, or gaining, gaining, you know, momentum on YouTube. And things change for her when the creator asks her to work with him and create the artwork for the podcast. She finds out who he is and then has to kind of confront him about it. And it's about their friendship and their struggles and what they want to do with their lives and should everything be predetermined pre pre and should you really go for the path in life that's going to get you the most money or should you go with your passion and I could ramble about this forever. I did ramble about it in my in my wrap up if you want to check that out I will link it in description but if this sounds like something that you enjoy, if you enjoy contemporary that's got some you know hard hitting deeper themes in it that will leave you with a little bit of a book hangover 
check it out guys. I love her now and I'll be reading more from Alice Oseman. I already have another one of her books that I'm excited for. <laughs> Then have Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. I again spoke a lot about this in that wrap up so I'll try and keep it short but this book is about nuns who train in magic and weapons and it's just awesome. We're following a young girl named Nonna who is about to be hung for a crime and a sister comes and rescues her and takes her back to this nunnery and then she starts to train with magic and weapons and she forms some rivalries with different classmates and eventual friendships and her character is just so sweet and cute and she's just so guarded but lovely and this is really good. There's a lot of intrigue in here as well. There's some kind of political intrigue to do with, you know, the church as well. And it's just full of awesomeness. It did take me a good 100 pages though, just, just saying, to really get into it. It's a lot of world building and character building at the beginning. But once you pass that point, it is totally worth it. Five stars. I already have Gross Sister. I'm hoping to read that next month. I love this series. If you like assassins, if you like lovely, relatable characters who are, you know, brave and courageous, but also, you know, quite timid and a little bit shy and a little bit introverted, you will enjoy this. For fantasy lovers, check it out. <laughs> and finally, my top two, you guys. First one being To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I hadn't read this before this year and I'm so very happy I have now. I will be rereading this probably again and again. It's one of my favourite stories of all time now. <laughs> So this is a classic, but if you haven't read it like I hadn't and you're not quite sure what it's about, this is basically about a young girl named Scout and she lives in the deep south in the 1930s and it's about her kind of relationship with her brother and also her father and her father is a defence attorney and he is being the lawyer for a black man who has been accused of the rape of a white woman at this time. So as you can imagine, lots of prejudice lots of racial kind of themes but what is so cool about this one in particular is that Scout is a young girl and we're seeing it all through her eyes and her dad is one of my favourite characters of all time now. So as we're seeing all this through the eyes of a child she is just so confused and concerned about her dad and her family and the prejudice that her neighbours are now inflicting upon their family simply because her dad is defending this black man for a crime that he possibly didn't commit. So very intriguing read. Also it's beautifully written and it's very character driven and you will fall in love with Scout. If you're anything like me and you're a bit of a tomboy when you're younger you will relate hard and I absolutely bloody love this book. Cannot recommend this enough. It's why it's made my top two. And finally you guys you know you know it's The Poppy War by R.F. Quang and I bloody love this book. Again I rambled on a lot about it in my wrap up so link in description. However, I'm going to ramble again and try and convince as many of you fantasy lovers out there to give this one a try. So if you haven't heard about this and you're new to my channel, this is my favourite book of the year. It's so damn good. It's the new kind of sensation in fantasy or, you know, it should be. So this story is an Asian mythology kind of inspired Chinese war but also with a young girl who is an orphan and then has to go train at a military school with magic and gods and these gods are very dark humoured and it's just full of amazingness. Yes, it's an adult book so we do have trigger warnings though for self-harm, like gratuitous violence and sexual violence as well because there's a war as you can imagine from the title in this book which of course is inspired by the actual Chinese war and I cannot recommend it enough. I'll stop, I'll stop so I can show you the other 20 books that I have here but guys please do me a favour and read it and then come back and talk to me about it because I just don't have enough people to gush about this book with. I'm honestly trying to force it into my friends hands. <laughs> None of them have taken the bait yet and I just don't know why. <laughs> So now, as I said, I'm just going to hold up some books and tell you what they are. I'm not going to go into any kind of synopsis, but of course you can ask me questions. I just wanted to include these because these were real close to getting five stars from me and um, they might be five stars for you. So first one is The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily XR Pan. The Lies of Lot Lamora by Scott Lynch. Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Alloy of Law, book four in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. Gracelyn by Kristen Cashore. Another graphic novel series, Descender by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nugent. The Shining by Stephen King. Perfume by Patrick Suskind. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. Circe by Madeline Miller. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. 
Helter Skelter by Vincent Bugliosi and Kurt Gentry, I think. <laughs> Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. And The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. So you guys, those are all the books that I read this year and absolutely bloody adored. I'm so thankful that books like these are in the world. They really helped me get through some hard times this year and I just cannot recommend these enough. Please check them out if you already haven't and any of these tickle your fancy. Also, let me know out of these, if you were to pick one on your TBR, like which one have you added to your TBR? <laughs> So thanks for watching you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know if you want me to do a 5 star prediction for the rest of the year, like the books I have on my TBR, that could possibly be 5 stars. Let me know if you want to see that and I will film that for you. So as I said, hope you enjoyed, please like and subscribe if you care to do so and I will catch you in my next one. See you later, bye.